So I think that one of the things that people think about being successful is I think they think that like, you know, there are certain types of people that are successful. Maybe it's you were born into it, or maybe it's because your personality or, you know, but I think that any, anybody can be successful if they just stick to stick to something. And I think people give up way too soon. Well, if you're not excited about having this kind of energy for the entire interview, then you might want to flip off this episode because Chris is going to bring the heat. She's going to bring the fire. She's going to bring the energy as we talk about how to achieve limitless prosperity in 2022 and beyond. And for those of you that are joining us live, hello, we're doing something kind of new and fun here. This is actually live. There's people here that are in the chat. They're hanging out. For those people that are listening to the recording at a later date, you're awesome too. You get to hit the pause button and, and you get to you know skip back if you want to hear something all over again. So you're doing some right things as well. And we're talking about a lot of interesting conversations today with Krista. And when I first met you, Krista, I'm kind of just thinking back. I mean, I was, I was honestly blown away when you told me that you hadn't actually even lived at home since you were 13 years old. Because when I was 13, I was still trying to figure out how to tie my own shoelaces. So, I mean, it just kind of was like, wow. I, I heard a little bit of the story. I want to hear more of it. And I think that right now is a great venue for you to go through the process of how you went from there to where you are here today. Okay. So I haven't lived at home since I was 13. There was um, some physical abuse happening in my home um, from my mom and it was uh, obviously a hidden, no one knew about it. And so it was kind of like I lived in, in two families, if that makes sense, because I had this really loving mom and dad with my two brothers and we, you know, did vacations together and we went camping all the time. And, and then there was this like, child abuse that was happening um that was hidden you know so it was kind of like my mom would sort of have these rages and then she would feel really bad about it it was like it, it was I lived that life right so when I was 13 I started running away from home and I ended up living in the streets and living on in like uh, my parents uh, my, my friends friends parents RVs and living in abandoned buildings um and every time I would get taken back that I would just run away again. So I did that for about a year until finally I broke the law. I ended up breaking into my eighth grade um, PE locker room and stealing all the girls clothes and their lunch money because we didn't have clothes or lunch money or food. So we, so we were, we stole their clothes so that got me put into juvenile hall. I was in juvenile hall for um, about three and a half months. And then I went back home and I realized really quickly that I, you know, things hadn't changed. And so I called my probation officer and said, Hey, I can't stay here. So he arranged to have me go to a foster home. So I spent the rest of my youth um, in a foster home. And I remember when I, like, when I went to leave home, I remember my dad in the driveway, just like crying and begging me to stay, but he didn't know what was going on. He was like, we can work this out, Krista, please, please don't go. We don't go. And I didn't tell him what was happening. So it was hard. I mean, I, I remember crying for about six months in the foster home because I really missed my family. It was like, I had this, you know, I was, I was lonely and I missed my brothers and I, I missed my mom as well, obviously as my dad. And, um, but it ended up being okay. I just switched it around and I was always a good kid. Just, um, couldn't handle the abuse anymore. So that, that's, that's my story. <laughs> well, thank you for sharing that. I mean, I know it's vulnerable. It's hard to talk about those type of things, you know, especially in this public of a format. So I really commend you for that. And I want to honor you for that as well. One thing I do want to ask you just out of my own personal curiosity, before we move on, you know, we hear a lot about juvie, you know, as we grow up and, you know, it's kind of always like a threat hanging over the heads of, of kids of like, you're going to go to juvie if you're bad and yada, yada. <laughs> You spent three and a half months there. Was there anything positive that came out of that experience? Well, let me tell you the first week I was there, this wasn't positive, but I remember this girl, I, I think she must've been about eight feet tall. At least to me, she seemed like that, right? This real big girl. And we were in the bathroom and she grabbed this other girl's hair and her head and started bashing her head into the porcelain toilet and blood is everywhere. And she is just wailing on this girl. And I remember thinking like, oh my gosh, I'm going to die in here. So she ended up getting put in isolation for, you know, maybe about a month. And then when she got out, I was like, I'm going to make friends with the mean girl because when you're in juvie, you want to make friends with the mean person so they can protect you. So I made friends with her. They ended up making me be her roommate. 
And um, she was actually a madam. So she was a madam in San Francisco. And she's like, Krista, I'll take care of you. You can come, you know, stay with me. We get out of here. I'm like, that's okay. I think I got it. Like <laughs> I, I made a choice not to become a prostitute at a very young age. So I didn't, I didn't take her up on, on, on it, but, um, but it, it was, it was actually scary. It was scary. Um, yeah. And I mean, I don't really know if there's anything good about it other than I learned um, really early on to make friends with the mean people. <laughs> Well, hey, listen, if there's anything positive you can take out, you did not become a prostitute at a very young age. <laughs> yes, so you yes, made yes, yes. a good decision in juvie. And I want to skip way ahead now. And then we're going to do some backfill throughout the rest of the episode too. But I want to skip way ahead because what really blew me away was that story that you just told. And then of course, seeing you at different events and conferences that we've you know both spoken at and got to hang out at, you know, you're just very confident, self-assured, very successful. I mean, you're currently making you know, anywhere from two to $4 million a month, specifically using digital marketing. So this being like an entrepreneurial show, let's break down that process. Like, how are you managing to do those kind of numbers in this kind of environment? So um, I know this sounds like really cliche, but I will tell you that, you know, when you go through um, abuse from a parent. It's, it's a very psychologically um, damaging because your parent are the ones that's supposed to protect you. So I had to really, really work on my mindset. I mean, more than I can tell you. I and mean, I've read so many books. I still read so many books on just like the brain and how the brain works and the power of positivity, the power of um, showing gratitude. And I just, you know, people think that I have all this energy all the time and I'm always so happy, but I really choose to be like that, right? And I, I, I know that high energy equals high income. And I cannot tell you how many times I've been told, like, I love your energy. And, you know, we hired you because of your enthusiasm. And I hear that probably almost every day. Um, and so I believe that, you know, we have a choice of how we, how we choose to deal with things. We have a, cho a choice on how we show up and we have a choice on how we, we take situations in our life and how we view them and how we think about them. And so I have just always, I really make it, I'm very mindful of just really concentrating on like being, what am I thinking about? What am I saying to myself? Like what, how am I perceiving different situations? How am I like, I'll, like, I'll give you a good example, John. So, you know, I call it the, the day I hired you to help me with um, this project. And I, I was just like, freaking out all the things i'm doing this project and there's i'm like the um we, we will call me what, what's that what, what i'm like the underdog right I'm, I'm definitely the underdog in this thing that i'm doing and there are way more successful people with me that have huge lists of people i'm i don't have that you know and they have a larger audience and so all of a sudden i i emailed john i go i'm freaking out like all of a sudden i'm going like what did i do and and he's like hey change your mindset right now i was like okay okay i just you're right and i just like switched it like I literally just turned to turn to switch. And um, John said, well, you are human, Krista, you are human. So what I'll tell you is that when you're going through things or the, the doubt sets in or the fear or the anxiety, because it happens to all of us, it happens to, you know, to, to, to me, to, to John, it's just like letting those things be moments and not be, not turn into hours or days or weeks. And since then I still have, I get the fear sometimes, John, because I am, totally the underdog in this whole thing. And I keep telling myself, you're going to do good. You're going to do good. So it's just a matter of, you know, just what are you saying to yourself? What are you thinking? How are you looking at situations? And just really being mindful of that because you can create anything that you want. I really believe that there's ne there's nothing um, that is past any of us. Another thing is I wet the bed until I was 10 because of the abuse. I couldn't read until I was in fourth grade. I have a central processing disorder. Um, and so it's it, it's been hard, right? But I, I chose like, this is what I want in life. And this is why I'm, I'm just won't stop until I, you know, keep going. And I'm not doing $4 million a month. I had one $4 million a month. We're averaging about like one and a half million a month. <laughs> well, thanks for clarifying. For that. That. I appreciate the authenticity and the transparency. I mean, that's something that I really pride myself on as well. We've been launching or publishing our monthly income reports now for 107 consecutive months. So we love the honesty. We love the transparency. We love when people actually do share numbers. Like you had a high of 4 million. You're doing anywhere from, you know, one to 1.5 every month, which is mind blowing. And that's insane and fantastic. And I, I appreciate, again, you sharing that because for people to see where you've come from, the struggles that you had, wetting your bed till 10, not being able to, you know, write until, was it right until fourth read. grade? Read, read or write, right? Because you, you can't read, you can't, read, you can't write. <laughs> right. You can't read or write until you were in the fourth grade. I mean, all the physical abuse that was going on at your household, which you were keeping, you know, quiet from your, your, your father and other people in your family, of course. I mean, that's, 
just when people can see what you've done from where you've come, they do ask themselves the question, why not me? As they should be, because that is a question that you should be asking yourself. Why not me? Now you were crushing it in real estate and you still are in a lot of ways, but specifically with real estate training. And then you decided to shift into mindset, into prosperity. And you're doing training all around those two main topics right now. So why did you make that decision, despite all the success you were having in the real estate training, to go into the mindset, um, prosperity training type of mindset? Because I, it starts there. Um, you know, you could teach, and I'll, I'll tell you how I, how I really learned this, is that I was doing this challenge for about four years now. And in the challenge, we started seeing people get success really, really quickly. And the challenge was all about mindset. It was like, discovering, like figuring out what your limiting beliefs are, figuring out about what holds you back, figuring out what you're fearful of, you know, all about mindset, mindset, mindset. And so people started getting success really quickly in the, in the, um, during this challenge. And I realized that in my own training that people weren't seeing the successes as, as quickly. Cause I was like, I don't want to give them all the tactics. I want to make sure I show them how to do all these things. And I was throwing all the stuff at them, right? Like the tactical things, but I skipped the mindset. And so when I redid the training and put mindset for the first month uh, of the training, I noticed a huge shift because mindset is more important than skill set. And you could like you could Google anything, right? You can Google anything. Um, as you know, we have one of the same mentors, Russell Brunson. He always says, asks who, not how. And you know, you you can, you can Google anything. But what I have found is that when people get their mind right and they truly are um just really cognizant of what they're thinking, what they're saying, what their thoughts are, you know. You, your thoughts become things, right? Like what your philosophies, your beliefs, the things that you focus on, they turn into your actions, your habits, how you implement. Those turn into your life, right? Your outcome. And so it all 100% starts from, from thoughts. And if you if you do research on the brain, um, you, your brain is just like, it's, it's, it's this mag magnificent gift that we have that we take for granted and we don't realize you know, what it, what it can do. And so um, I love the mindset aspect of it because I feel like it's, it's not just about money, right? Money's great, but it's about really, truly living a happy life. And right now with everything that's going on in the world, I, I just see how my students are struggling and how people are just so afraid. All you hear about is, uh, you know, um, you just hear about the negativity, you hear about the inflation, you hear about interest rates, you hear about the war, you hear about the pandemic, it's all negative. And we have between 12,000 and 60,000 thoughts a day that come through our, through our mind. And there's so much attention on negativity that that's what people focus on. And when they focus on that, they, they keep getting more negativity in their life. So I really want to help people right now, especially with what's happening, just like we can get through this, you know, but I think right now more than ever in history, as, at least as long as I've been alive, it has not been more important than to start focusing on the good stuff. And so we have a challenge that's coming up. It's called Limitless Prosperity. Um, so you go to limitlesspropertychallenge.com and it's it's a three week training. It's a half an hour a day um, when I'm just going to be talking about people about, you know, teaching them the strategies that I have learned to really, really be super uberly successful in, in, in my career. I have two companies that, you know, um, million dollar, million dollar month companies and another company that's over a million dollars a year um, that I just kind of is more of a passive company for me. And um, it all starts from the mindset. <laughs> so I want to help people with it. And I want to get more into that training, but before we do, let's just give maybe one really practical tip for anybody listening to this right now. If they are struggling, if they are finding that negative thoughts are encompassing the majority of those 60,000 thoughts they're having every single day, what's one practical tip you can give the listeners right now, something that they could do on a daily basis to really help? I have this, I'm actually writing a book right now. It's called Stop, Snap, and Switch. And it's a strategy that I developed where when you, when you notice, remember energy goes where focus flows. So when you notice what you're thinking about, right, you stop and recognize it. So you snap, and you, you snap a bracelet. So a removable bracelet, a rubber band, a hair tie. So you stop, snap it, recognize what you're saying, take the bracelet, put it on the other hand, and then restate mm. the negative, the, the negative uh, statement. So it's stop, snap, and switch. Just by doing that, just by being more mindful of what you're thinking about, you would be amazed at how quickly all of a sudden your just like your mood changes, your what your output changes, your productivity changes, so many parts about your life just from recognizing the negativity. And then you start to become happier internally, which also 
you're happier externally. And so it starts to have like a compound effect on your family, on your friends, on your kids. So stop, snap and switch. Recognize the thought, turn it around, restate the statement as you're putting the, bra the bracelet on the other hand. And then you're gonna start to notice at first, like, oh my God, I'm thinking about negative stuff. And this is, this is negativity with whether it be about your marriage or your, your body or your business or anything, right? Um, just recognize and just by doing that, you'll be amazed at what can happen to your life. I love that. That's very practical. That's something that everybody can do. It's simple, but it's something that can be very effective when done in the manner that you're talking about, because I can definitely see that, you know, where your mind flows, the energy is going and you need to, let's stop that flow. Let's readjust it just like a river and started going down the right direction. And what's going in the right direction, you don't want to stop that. So you're not going to switch anything. You're not going to stop anything. And you know, like you see with water, like, you know, water doesn't jump out of a river and try to make a new river. Like it pretty much is, is happy in that riverbed. So as long as you're making sure that your, your water is flowing in the right direction, you're good to go. And something that I really want to add to this, that's really been beneficial for me over the years. It's a gratitude journal. And, you know, don't think that like journaling has to be this like 20 minute, 30 minute hour, multi-hour thing. You're going to be sitting down and writing down all your thoughts and all your worries and all your excitement and all this. It can be something as simple. And in fact, I think it's more effective when it's something this simple, which is when you get up in the morning and you go through your morning routine and part of that morning routine includes a gratitude journal where you just write down one unique thing that you're grateful for. And you start doing that every single day that starts getting your mindset going now towards not what am I scared of, not what am I anxious about, what am I stressed out about, what am I upset about? It's what am I grateful for? And the important word in that sentence though is unique. What is the unique thing? Because otherwise everybody's like, I'm grateful for my kids, I'm grateful for my kids, I'm grateful for my kids. And we know you are and you should be, but we need to get outside of just one thing and look around. Like I like to I say, hey, look around right now and identify one thing in your world right now that you are grateful for, you know, it's that lamp that's providing light for me right now. Like I'm grateful for that because without that, you know, we wouldn't have good lighting for this video, but that's just like one small thing that I can be uniquely grateful for that. Otherwise I don't even think about, but it can start the day off on the right foot gratitude. Now I do want to end with a bang here, Chris, and I want to get back to your training that you mentioned. And I want to go into a little more detail about this because I'm going to be taking the training because I'm a big believer in this type of mindset training. I'm going to be a part of it in certain ways as well. We're going to have some fun together because as you mentioned earlier, you know, I am your strategic coach for this really exciting, you know, challenge that you're doing, not to mention what's happening with Dean Graciosi and Tony Robbins. We're going to have a lot of fun working together, combining our forces, so to speak, to really make a massive impact in this world. So that's going to be a lot of fun. So talk to our listeners, everybody that's here live today as well. What exactly is this challenge all about and why should they really make the time to get involved? So especially with everything that's happening, you know how it is, right? Like it's, it is paralyzing to people right now. People are paralyzing and what people do under times of stress is they just stop in, in many cases. And so it's just going to be to start your day off with some positivity, some enthusiasm, some hope and, and gratitude. That's one of the strategies that I teach. And it's funny that you said that because there's research about showing gratitude and how long when you are just by showing gratitude, like John said, the effects of showing gratitude last for up to two weeks, two weeks of positive. Po yep. Two weeks um, of positive effects. So we're going to be helping people just start their day off right and become a positive, um, you know, source of inspiration for their families. My dogs are in crazy right now. By the way, get a dog if oh you want gosh. to join your life because you hear them? my dog, Gus, brings me so much happiness. I take him on a walk every morning. He's so happy and excited and every evening. And I'm like, what if life was that simple that, you know, I could just be happy just for walking outside, which we all should be. So that was a nice little interlude by your pup. I have two, I have two, but they're going crazy right now, but isn't it crazy how happy dogs get like you leave for a half an hour and they come back and they're like, I've never seen you before. Oh my God. Never. And they're just like so crazy, but that's how, you know, we want to, we want to be as much as we can be like, like dogs when you, you haven't seen them for a while. And it's just, it's really that simple, but you know, life is, it's not as hard as we're, we make it. It's like, I really believe that everything is a choice, right? Like you could have, what's that saying? Make your mess into your message. Oh yeah. So, 
right? Like that's kind of what I've done with my past. And I think people look at people like that are successful like you, right? Or me, and they think, oh my gosh, there's something special about Kristen and John because they are successful. It's just that like you have, and I have very similar attitudes. We're both positive, we're at, we're at B. I remember meeting you and you were so nice. Like, you know, and I just said, hey, my team wanted me to ask you if I can be on your podcast. You're like, sure. I'm like, okay, cool. Right, and being on your podcast, remember that? And I was like, yeah, I did it. But if I didn't ask, and, and John was just so gracious. And so, you know, part of what makes you so successful is your your positive energy. You have that that aura about you. And I think people people will say, well, I'm not naturally happy or, but you can choose to be right. It's all, it's all a choice. And you think about people that when you meet them and they're like, there's, there's energy givers, and there's energy suckers, like be an energy giver. Right. And so this limitless prosperity challenge um, is just to really help people be mindful of what they're thinking and really choose their own path in their own direction. And I think it's, you know, it's the, it's going to be the, your anchor to having a great day. It's going to be your anchor to helping other people have a great day. It's going to be your anchor to creating more wealth, prosperity, and happiness in every aspect of your life. So that's, I'm just super, super excited about it. Well, let's end with a bang. Let us know the one thing that we talked about here today that you really want to walk away with from all the value bombs we dropped. That you are, you are the only one responsible for creating the life that you deserve and you deserve it, right? There's like, no one's coming to save you. It's, it, it doesn't matter what happened to you in the past. Like you are in control of your destiny and don't let what the world is saying right now and all the negativity, like hold you back. There have been billionaires that are made during times of recession and during times like this. It's, I've had the best years of my life in business over the past years during the pandemic. And it's because, you know, we, you choose it and it doesn't mean it's easy. doesn't mean that it's, you know, that it, it wasn't hard at times. And when we talk about money that we make, John, we know it costs a ton of money to make money, right? Like, yeah. oh, a million dollar months. Well, some, there's been times where it cost me $700,000 to make a million, right? Or, mm-hmm. or there's times when I've lost a lot of money from decisions that I've made. So um, show up, just go to limitlessprosperitychallenge.com. I'd love to have you. I promise you this, that I'm not going to be selling you anything during those three weeks. I am, it is full value and service. Invite your family, invite your friends, and just like, let's be happier together. <laughs> I love that so much because Fire Nation knows they're the average of the five people they spend the most time with. You've been hanging out with KM and JLD today. So keep up the heat and keep up the heat through this challenge as well. Free, Limitless, free challenge too, John. It's free. Free challenge, limitlessprosperitychallenge.com, limitless prosperitychallenge.com free. You get to surround yourself with me, with Krista, with other amazing people. I mean, I see the people that are here live today. They're just dropping this awesome positivity in the, in the notes and the chat. And it's so cool to see they're giving thumbs up. All this great stuff's happening when you surround yourself with the right people. So make that happen. Thanks so much for watching my video. You can learn more about how to be a successful real estate professional by watching other videos that I have. And be sure to subscribe to my channel. And as always, make it a great home selling and buying day.